In this video, I'll get the orbits for the planets in place. I'm going to use circles for the orbits and an ellipse for the moon's orbit around the sun. We can make these slightly elliptical shaped if we'd like to get more accuracy on our model. The big question is, in a simulation like this, can we tell the difference? An astronomer might be able to, but as they're simply demonstrating where the planets are relative to each other, we can get away with circles. First, I'll start out by moving the sun to zero zero so I can refer other objects to it absolutely if I need. I'll drag a window around, press W for move, and pull these off to the side. Notice that I'm clicking on the X and Y bracket on the move tool, which lets me move on two axes. I'll pull these over and then select the sun. Down in the bottom of the UI, I have an X, Y, and Z field. And right now these are measuring in the absolute world position. I'll zero this out by right-clicking on the spinner. In 3ds Max, right-clicking on a spinner allows us to reset that spinner to its default value. If the lowest value is 1, for example, the spinner will reset to 1. In this case, this sets the center of the sun at 0, 0, 0. Now I'll get the orbits in place. In my planet sizes and orbits chart, the Earth is one astronomical unit from the Sun, and an astronomical unit is 150 million kilometers. What we need to do to make this readable and not absolutely enormous is to scale down those units and get the planets proportionately correct apart from each other. I'll start out putting the Earth 10 meters away from the Sun. I'll make one astronomical unit 10, and then the others are a relative percentage of that. In the view, I'll hold control and right click, and again on the modeling quad, I'll choose circle. You can add other things to the quad if you'd like. As you can see, I've added on cam for cylinder, and this is available here under customize and customize user interface. The neat part in 3ds Max is you can customize nearly anything. Whatever makes you fast, add it into your workflow. I'll click and drag out a circle around the sun, right clicking to stop creating, and then click on the modifier tab on the command panel. I'm going to make the radius here 10, and this will allow me to put in easy percents of that to get the other orbits. I may end up reducing the size of my sun. Again, it's a figurative sun, not a literal size. I'll pull the radius here of the sun down to 3. We'll know it's the sun because it's nice and bright, but now I can get the other planets in. When we start to deal in Neptune's orbit, we're going to be hundreds of meters away in our scale. So we don't want to make this too big initially, or we'll never see the small four inner planets. Now I'll get the circle aligned on the sun. I'll click on the Align tool, and then click on the sun. In the Align dialog that pops up, I'll align the X, Y, and Z position from center to center. We have a lot of options here as how to align, so we can get a lot of precision in our movement. I'll click OK, and I'll name this circle Earth Orbit. Now I'll clone it, and instead of moving, I'll press Control v to clone this in place. I'll clone this as a copy, so changing one doesn't change the other, and I'll name this Mars Orbit. Mars's orbit, if we look in the PDF, is one and a half Earth units away, which gives me a radius here of 15 meters. I'll clone this again, and this time I'll make the Venus orbit. Venus's orbit is 0.7 astronomical units out. Mercury is 0.4, so these will get very small very quick. For Venus, then, I'll put in 7 meters. And finally, control V one more time and make Mercury. Mercury is 0.4 astronomical units away, so I'll put in 4 meters. Although the size is much, much smaller than the actual orbit, the proportion is correct. What we'll start to see is that once we get into Jupiter and Saturn, these orbits get very big. Jupiter is 5.2 astronomical units away. I'll clone the Mars orbit and name it Jupiter orbit. I'll put in a radius of 52, and when we zoom out, or deselect by clicking anywhere and hitting Z to zoom extents, we can see how big these orbits get to be. There's Jupiter, and Saturn gets even larger. 
Saturn's orbit is 9.5. And finally, Uranus is 19.6, and Neptune being 30 is way out there. I'll clone out the rest of these orbits and show what it looks like when I'm done. I've cloned the rest of my orbits out, and there's Neptune, in our scale, 300 meters out. It's an enormous orbit, and we can almost not see the inner small orbits here. So it's worth making our scale much smaller, although we get the relative spacing correct. In the next video, I'll get the planets on their orbits and cycling in the correct days and years around the Sun.